for you. This meeting is now in session. Bird? Here. Henson? Here. Mormon? Here. Musselbeck? Here. Williamson? Here. Ingstrom? Here. Approval of agenda. Any changes, Your Honor? No changes. Those to approve. Second. Call the roll. Henson? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Musselbeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Number three, presentation of petitions and other communications. A, Boone County Chamber of Commerce year end review. Jennifer Hansen. Hey, thanks for having me. Good evening. How about a handout for you? So um, I was thinking that the last time you probably saw me speak on overall chamber business was actually when I came on board in November of last year. And so as um, now the new director uh, in, in Mike's place, I wanted to just kind of give a recap of the last year and uh, to just speak a little bit towards what we've, what we've been able to accomplish. And so um, the good news is now is as a nonprofit and volunteer charged organization, uh, our membership and their engagement fosters our work. Uh, I stand for representing 231 member organizations. Um, and uh, since this card was just last printed, um, it we, we've got up one. But anyway, um, and some of you that may have joined us for our annual meeting, uh, you'll recognize this card. However, it has been updated uh, since since that meeting. So just not, as an FYI. Uh, but membership overall is up. We added 45 new members uh, since my time on, on the chamber. Uh, with an 87% retention rate over 22, which is uh, above the national average of 85%. Um, beyond serving our members, one thing that was apparent to me that I felt like the chamber could do is use our tools uh, to really allow uh, businesses of any uh, uh, that, are, whether they're members or not, but they are new businesses, is to give them that good exposure to help them gain traction. And so um, as one of the efforts of our Red Coat group and our ambassador team, we've done ribbon cuttings on 55 new businesses just in Boone alone. Um, and so that can really help give new businesses that traction in a very busy kind of social media space. So we really felt um, that that was a great tool of ours that over 111 years of, uh, of our organization that was able to really provide them. Um, overall, that ambassador's team was done 140 visits. And one thing that we established starting last year was the cool school tour. And so 17 of those visits were cool schools uh, throughout the county. And uh, that really allowed us to really dig into those, uh, to what our schools are doing for our families and really expose um, just the general community as to new staff, new development, new programs and renovations that are happening at our schools every day. Um, going forward, some of the newer things that we've done just this last few months is establish a new website that uh, has a lot of more features and really uh, provides a lot more um, resources and tools for anyone that's going to be at home in Boone. So just as an example, we have a tab on the workforce development that really gives a lot of numbers uh, for employers and employees uh, together. Another uh, piece to that website that really was something that um, was very, very apparent from the very beginnings, you know, even before uh, Mike had left, was that community calendar piece. So just having a tool that connected our community, whether or not that event or that member or that organization was a chamber member or not, I really wanted to make sure that our community was, was just just connected to what's happening in our town. And so that community calendar was just uh, something that the chamber had for a long time and I was able to kind of just dust it off, rebrand it, kind of re-expose our community to it and just build it. And, and it's really gained a lot of traction. So you can see year over year uh, that those numbers have gone up too, just those, those click-throughs. Um, in addition to that, uh, those tools, we have resources and lists for those 55 and up. Uh, plenty of regional resources from everyone from, from Ames throughout the county um, to really kind of give uh, those who are building their life here uh, a leg up. For 24, I, uh, I wanted to tell you about our new board. So our, our board of directors is going to share some, uh, some of them are actually here tonight. 
So our president is Paul Jacobson with Vision Bank. Uh, Vice President is Julie Treppa with Boone Community Schools. We also have uh, Scott Chitty with Bayer, Christine Redeker with Redeker's Furniture, um, Alex Grinzinger with the White Camp, Sam Burial with Edward Jones, Shiloh Burke with Shiloh Burke Insurance, Aaron Moby, of course, is with the theater, Charlie Moffitt with Moffitt's Ford, Courtney Davidson with Creative Cousins, Kobe Pritchard with Fairway, and Clint Peterson with Pledges and DNR. Um, now, of course, that's just kind of from the Chamber's perspective. As you know, we've done a lot of work uh, as a group with the downtown, and our the group has been working very hard this last year and kind of regrouping from the, the, the 22 application. And so with the assessment that happened uh, just this spring and uh, just really kind of digging into what we needed to do to kind of move forward, we two things that were very apparent was number one is apply again. We, they really felt we were so close and we had so many of the baseline, um, the, just the work that had been done in the partnerships that had been created because of the 22 application, that just seeing that being strengthened and seeing that uh, optimized, I think was, was just really what they're looking for. For me as, as a professional in this space, but also just in general, our leadership development was something super important. That assessment actually allowed me personally to be, have be now have an ongoing mentorship with uh, a downtown and Main Street director. And so I personally uh, have benefited from that. Um, certainly planting our trees at downtown, 29 trees were planted uh, in our downtown space. And so that's really been a great opportunity to get the community together, um, bring in a lot of smaller donations and just really value the, the, the community around what, what ultimately we're doing downtown. And so in uh, as that new application process is coming up for 24, one thing that I wanted to make sure everyone knew about was two workshop opportunities uh, to for those uh, anyone here that wanted to participate, I wanted to maybe even just to know kind of what this is all about. Maybe if you weren't here in 22, uh, but really as we get ready to apply for this large grant, this is going to give us all an opportunity to kind of just reset, know what's going on, know what's what, what's necessary, and then be able to build from from there. So if you're able to join us for one of those. Um, please do. There are two different dates that are, uh, that, that are happening. And so Kelly and I are, uh, Kelly's got a, a running list of those who are uh, coming up with those dates. So just you know, let one of us know what, which one you can do. So, um, that's really what I had to answer any questions. Any questions? I got a question. Well, um, when you talk about the website and and you know social media and stuff do you know like what kind of exposure you're getting how many you know people are visiting the site how many followers that sort of stuff i guess yeah yeah so actually on the card there too i do have some numbers there for you as to what um our monthly average social media reach is a little over twenty thousand. uh so speaking of social media in this is good we have um we, we have instagram facebook and linkedin so it's good yeah. but these numbers are based on facebook uh, four counties to our main our, is our reach goes to. So really a nice regional reach for anyone that uh, in terms of sharing news that's happening in our Boone area and really kind of getting the word out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Jennifer, do you want to be the back or do you want me to pass now? Okay. Questions or comments? Thank you very much for your report. Okay, hey, uh, number four, this is a change in our usual agenda order. So I wanna make sure that everybody uh, knows this. Uh, this will be public comment for items not on the agenda. And if you wish to make a comment, please come up to the gate and state your name and address. Uh, but remember, this will be for items not on the agenda and we can't take any action at this time. Public comment. Okay, five, report for standing committees. Policy and Administration, Williamson. Uh, no report tonight. Public Safety and Transportation, Heard. No report, Mayor. Utility, Foreman. I believe we're going to have a meeting next Tuesday, right? Yes, January 9th. January 9th, 4.30. 4.30. Economic Development. Um, we will be having an ED meeting on January 15th at 5.30. 
And then uh, Brenda is here tonight to go over the uh, approved submitting a 2024 application for the Central Iowa Housing Trust Fund. So to refresh everybody's memory, uh, last year we received $80,000. Um, matched it with a little over $10,000 of the city's funding, and we were able to support uh, what looks to be about 12 homeowners with major uh, improvements to their homes. Uh, we received more applications by the deadline and then had a few more trickle in after the deadline. Uh, so we knew fairly early last year uh, there was significant interest in the owner-occupied repair program. A couple pointers, we've got some new faces at the table. Um, this is a program that is targeted to low to moderate income and I'm gonna have Terry distribute uh, the income limits just so you get a sense of this. And there are a few extras if there are folks in the audience interested as well. Um, so these funding, these funds come from the federal government to the Iowa Finance Authority. And so we're actually, um, who then distributes them to uh, designated housing trust funds across Iowa. So Boone is part of the Central Iowa Housing Trust Fund, and um, that would include Boone, Jasper, Marion, and Warren counties. And so um, as we are identifying folks that are eligible to apply, based on the size of their household, determines whether or not they're eligible to receive funding. So um, this is not a program for everybody to make improvements to their homes, but folks that are able to meet the income qualifications. My recommendation to you tonight is to apply for $80,000 in grant funding again from Central Iowa Housing Trust Fund. Um, the increase, the match uh, increase has increased, the match requirement has increased over last year. And the required match from the city of Boone in order to leverage $80,000 in grant funding is $20,480. And again, that would give us funding um, of 10, um, $10,480. In the application, I identified that we would target assisting at least 10. Uh, we are likely able, well, able to probably squeeze in a few more because not everybody asks for the maximum of 10,000. So the thought behind a $10,000 grant is you can deal with a ma pretty major roof issue. Uh, you can deal with uh, a pretty major plumbing issue, electrical, um, we were able to assist some folks that had some plumbing challenges uh, with sewer lines and uh, again, made quite a difference. So when I do my report uh, here in a couple of weeks, I'll actually provide you some of the comments and the photos uh, as we're getting ready to close out the existing grant. So uh, targeting at least 10, a match of 20,480. You've seen the income requirements um, when they apply, they're self really determining that amount. And uh, if the, um, the applications, of course, if we decide to proceed, we're successful in getting the funds. Uh, the Economic Development Committee last time served uh, as the resource to actually rank those applications. So we had documentation available for those folks that didn't qualify. Um, uh, but again, then if they're selected, then that's when I ask for the actual proof with tax returns and bank statements. So as you're talking with people, make sure they understand that that information has to be provided and kept in our files. Uh, IFA does audit the files and have to be ready at any point in time for that. We were audited. One of our files was audited. We did just fine. We had all the documentation in place and those sorts of things. But Again, the, the issue tonight is, is does the council want to submit an application? Are they willing to commit the match? And if you decide to do that and we are successful, I'll commit to doing a couple informational meetings uh, to try to help. And I'll just let you all share that out as well. We'll know fairly quickly. The applications are due the 15th of January. We'll know by the end of January, probably early in February, if we have funds available. And I'd suggest we act and get those funds out the door. So once we know, we'll keep moving. 
So <clears throat> questions for me? Well, was, How much questions? Yeah, it was very successful last time. And I think that $20,000 is a really good investment mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah, I think it was really helpful to a lot of the plumbing issues. We, we, if you read some of the letters, it, it, it was life-changing for some people. So for those that may not be totally in the loop, this is funding for people who already live in their homes. To have to own it. Yep, they have to own their homes and they already live here. They're making improvements on their existing homes and self-helping out everyday citizens. We made a couple of homes accessible for handicapped people and stuff like that. So it was a, it was well worth the investment. So. And how many say all the time, the most affordable option sometimes is for people to stay where they're at. How many did we help last year? Right at about 12. I'm waiting for the final one to come through. But And there were how many that I think we received 16 or 18 applications okay. by the deadline and then probably another five after uh, afterwards. So the needs there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we could start by communicating with them. The project cannot have started. That's the other thing we got. Um, Okay. Those are things we'll cover in an informational meeting and we do our best to be as transparent as possible on the process. Of course, we keep incomes. Uh, that's confidential. Any other questions or comments? Move to approve the application. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Mormon. Yes. Elsabet? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. This uh the final thing that I have too kind of leads into that. I would ask that all department heads, and since most of you are here now tonight, um, that from this point forward, if you apply for a grant or are thinking about applying for grants that require a city match, come to Bill ahead of time and let him know that that's what your plan is so that he can bring it to council. We have to budget for these things. So if you apply for a grant that requires a $50,000 city match, we can't just take that out of the air somewhere. We have to find that money. So prior to doing that, come to Bill, let him know what's going on, what your plans are, and then he can bring it to council and we can discuss it. Just I would appreciate that. Okay. Anything else on economic development? Nope. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, number six, department reports. Uh, building official, Dave. Department's report. Okay. Uh, clerk, finance officer, Andrea. No report. No report. City attorney, Jim. No report, Your Honor. Director of Public Works, Waylon. No report, Your Honor. Okay. Library, Jamie. No report. Uh, Park superintendent, Mike. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we had a CIP uh, for 25000 for a new doors in the pool and that came in at 17,900 and we had two of our diving boards were in really rough shape so we use the remainder of that money to purchase those boards and then we'll dig into the buildings and grounds a little bit to pay for the rest of it yeah. otherwise that's it. thank you thank you city engineer oh. there's anything you're on uh, public safety chief out right here Chief Weevil. No report, Your Honor. Report. The administrator. Uh, the process for filling Ward 3 open councils. Thank you. Okay, so what we have first up tonight uh, under my report, as you know, we have a vacancy now uh, in Ward 3. Uh, there are two options that you can uh, go with. Uh, this obviously would be a decision by council. You can take letter of resumes or letter of applications, you can appoint somebody, or uh, you can have a special election. We'll start first with the, uh, if you choose to do the appointment. Um, the appointment, uh, the person would need to run again in November of 25. So you really have just about a two year term here that needs to be filled. Uh, if you choose to go that route, we can have a notice in the paper by January 11th. And we can accept uh, letters of interest and or resumes from applicants until noon on January 26th. We would get those out to you that afternoon. And the mayor and council can discuss this on the February 5th council meeting and make a decision at that, at that meeting. Uh, appointments must be made within 60 days of the vacancy. Uh, and as you know, citizens can petition for a special election uh, fifteen percent of the votes casted for that office in the last general election. 
is how many signatures that you would need. So that's the option for appointing. If you want to vote to hold a special election, staff will get busy. Uh, we'll have to contact the auditor's office. Uh, the position uh, needs to be appointed within 90 days. I will share with you that the last special election for a ward, just a single ward, and that was Ward 4 in 2019, was about $1,285. Uh, a citywide election with this would not require, but the last one we had for the open uh, at large was about $3,700. So I'll leave it to the elected officials for discussion and to direct staff on how you want to proceed. Can we take applications? And if we only get one, move to appointment. But if we get two, move to special election. Is that doable? Is that no. happen that way? Yeah, you can do it that way. If you choose to go that route first, then decide not. Um, we would want to do that fairly quickly as we have 90 days. If we need, if you then decide to go to special election, we have 90 days. So by the end of March, we need to have someone, we need to have that special election no later than in March. I feel like it's a good way to just see who is willing to, well, to do the service, you know? Yeah, I don't think we'd go to all the effort of a special election if you get one, one name in the hat. I don't know. I don't know about, yeah, you guys, but I haven't heard of a lot of people interested in it yet so i think i know of one but you were saying we have the option then to go ahead with an election if it gets competitive right if it's only had one candidate or two candidates with it being a two-year you know two years left i i think we should get our feelers out to see who's interested and then if we have the interest then go to a special election i think that would be awkward if we got names and then said, well, we want to go to an election. I, I mean, push us back quite a bit too. What's that? I just said, <clears throat> if we did that, I feel like that would just push everything back as well. But Terry, I just think to have a special election and then it took me to an election when I ran for six months. So I personally, I think we should go to an election, but uh, I, I'll go with what council decide. David? My gut would say go to an election right away. Okay. And I totally get Corey's point, though. Why spend the money if we don't have to? Yeah, why spend the money if you got one? One. It's not going to be any cheaper than it was in 19. So, why, yeah, why spend the money if you got one person interested? But that's just my thoughts. Well, I, I, it's a valid point. Very valid. I'm hoping we have more people interested. I mean, that we have several interested in the position. I guess I'd prefer an election. Well, personally speaking, my, you know, <clears throat> my preference has always been an election, and especially with a two-year term. But again, it is your decision. It is a two-year term. You're correct. Mm -hmm. Just like the mayor term, yeah. Which huh? is like the mayor term. I mean, it is two years. Yeah. I mean, how long is it going to set us back if we just see who's interested first? We got well, we'd have to put that in the paper to through the twenty sixth, or excuse me, put it in the paper on the eleventh. Take the uh, letter of interest on the twenty sixth, then report back to you on February fifth for you to decide if you wanted to move forward and make a decision, or at that time. And give us two months to do an election if we had to, right? Less. Well, I also then have to have a resolution passed by you guys right. to submit to the auditors so to that move forward with the, the special So election. that would be the second meeting in February. The time constraints are the what gets us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's purely time constraints. So it will set us back. I understand. Yes. Do you need a motion? I, I do need a motion. I make a motion that we put this up for an election. I'd second yep. that. Second. Uh, any other discussion? Please call the roll. Pelsebeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? No. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my second item. Um, you'll notice in the consent agenda, uh, there's ordinance number 2301. Uh, that is uh, covers our chapter 32. 
we hadn't discussed this previously. I asked Jim to um, bring this ordinance forward. Basically, so when we go out for RFPs, uh, if it's over 36,000, we have to do it a different way, which takes longer. And the state law on that is, for example, is 81,000, not 36. Our ordinance is outdated. It's not needed because we follow the state law anyway. So that's the reason that it's there for the first reading tonight. The uh, one other couple of notes, <clears throat> we need new council pictures from you all. Do you want to do that shortly or you want to wait until we fill that seat? But at some point we need to do it to update everything. We'll wait for we probably uh, have to wait. Yeah. Okay. So that's one that like gets framed down. Yes. It's also on the website. And so yeah. right now half the people are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right on the website. So we're trying to clean things up. Gotcha. I'd say let's just wait that way. It's all good stuff. Okay. Very good. My last item is to let you know uh, Ames EDC is sponsoring a Boone County Workforce Lunch and Learn. Uh, that is uh, February 15th out of DMAC campus from 1130 to 1 p.m. Uh, unless you have any questions for me, that is my report. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number seven, consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. Uh, there will be no separate discussions of these items unless the request is made prior to the time council votes. Are there any items that you wish to remove from the consent agenda? Seeing none, uh, call for. Oh, Make a motion. Second. Second. No, please, call the roll. Rough lease. <laughs> yes. Williamson? Yes. Angstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Okay. Uh, number eight, ordinances. Second reading, ordinance 2300 to allow the city of Boone, Iowa to change the stop sign regulations, West Park Avenue and South Marion Street, Chapter 65, Section 65.02.57. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Huckabed? Yes. B. First reading, Ordinance 2301 to allow the City of Boone, Iowa to change the procurement by request for proposals language in the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 32, Section 32.01. So moved. Second. Calls roll, please. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Hilsebeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Uh, number nine, Mayor's comments. Um, I just want to thank you all for welcoming me into this position. All the department heads that took time out of their day to meet with me and touch bases, all the council members who did the same. And I really look forward to working with all of you. So uh, you know, to see the next few years of Boone be as prosperous as it can be. Um, and that's really all I have. Number 10, council members' comments. I just have one comment and I know um, I would like to make a motion to uh, staff to draft a resolution keeping the no hats in chambers on the effective. I know you removed it. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that uh, maybe background, uh, that, um, prior to Mayor Slight's tenure, Hats were allowed in council chambers, and actually, uh, I was uh, asked by one of the formal council members uh, who always wore a hat uh, while he was sitting in the position um, if I would think about uh, removing that restriction. Um, and I thought about it, and I uh, considered, it, you know, implications and everything like that. And I didn't feel that wearing a cap, especially for somebody in uh, the public who wishes to come to city council meeting. Uh, was something that I that we needed to enforce. Um, times and standards of decorum change over over time, and uh, wearing a cap in a public space is not necessarily uh, as uh, verboten as, as previously. Um, and so I made the decision to just uh, to direct staff not to enforce the no cap rule in council chambers during meetings. So that's kind of the background on that. And um, essentially, my uh, my reason for doing that is just to make people more comfortable when they do come to council meetings. 
We have a motion. Can we vote on that today, or would that have to be? No. Okay. So, if the if uh, Mr. Morehart's motion is approved, then staff would prepare a resolution that uh, would be voted on at a future council meeting. It is my opinion that <clears throat> the council sets the rules and regulations for for the meetings, so uh, and procedure, so that it is it is something that is subject to council approval. It's not something that can just be done. It has to be done by resolution. So, so if you go ahead with the motion, then we would prepare the resolution for consideration. I'll second the motion. All roll. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Elsebeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Great. Uh, number 11, closed session pursuant to Iowa Code 21.51J to discuss the sale of a particular real estate uh, when signature disclosure could be reasonably expected to reduce the price uh, the city would receive for that property. So moved. Okay. Exactly. Please call the roll. Henson? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Yes. Williamson? Yes. Angstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. 